Hello, Richard. Well, this is lovely to hang out with you, Vajralila, and to share being space for each other. Lovely. <laughs> yes. That's great. Um, so one um, area that I'm really interested in is this um, absolute relative. So my experience to start with was I looked this way, I found nothing. And it was so amazing. I mean, some people have wow moments and some don't. For me, it was just wow. And it lasted about a year. I was, every time I looked this way, it was, it's nothing there and, and it's full of everything. It was incredible. <laughs> um, and f I think for that year, it's like almost like I, I reified emptiness, like emptiness was where it was at. This way where I found nothing was more valid than the forms it was full of. Mm. And, and I gather that's fairly normal for people. Mm. Um, so I guess my interest is really in, it's almost like coming back to everything, but in a different way. So in a way, nothing changes, mm. but everything changes. Yeah. So it's, I, I don't know, I'd be really interested to hear your experience of the character of Richard. That really is just a character. Yes. Found, but how how does that work in terms of, not becoming alienated and um, nihilistic. Yes, good. Yeah. Yes, good topic. Yes. Straight in there. Yes. Well, I think uh, it might be a good idea just to begin with for anyone watching this who doesn't know about the Headless Way, just to very briefly say what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, is that okay? Yeah, of course, please. Yes. Well, it's uh, just uh, being attentive to what it's like to be oneself and uh, noticing that from your point of view, you don't see your own face and uh, you're looking out of open space. This is a non-verbal experience. You can't see your face. Uh, and I'm uh, just uh, responding to this experience uh, in my way and you respond in your way. So uh, this basic experience is... Uh, Looking out of open space, being room for the world, uh, there's nothing in the way, being room for sounds and feelings and thoughts. And this is very easy to share. You just ask everyone, can you see your own face now? And of course you can't. Um, um, so in terms of what you're talking about, uh, I think that... Uh, uh, it, uh, it can be a surprise to people when they see this mm -hmm. and uh, if they react positively to it, like you did, and discover you're not what you look like and you're not, you're not the one that you uh, see in the mirror, you have this open space, um, that you can have a kind of honeymoon period with it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and then what happens sooner or later is the problems come back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you realize you're still identified with the one you see in the mirror. And so on. Mm. And then uh, I, I have experienced this myself. And then you either think that you must be doing something wrong. Or you, you've got to somehow come to terms with the fact that although you discover you're the big one, if I can put it in those terms, the little one, the one you see on the screen or in the mirror, still exists, and very much so. And how do you, what do you do with that little one? <laughs> well, uh, you can't get rid of it. And uh, I think that's something that you, certainly me, I've realized, well, I, I, I'm stuck with Richard <laughs> for this life. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I think that uh, there are other ways in which, well, what can I say? Uh, I've come to uh, really appreciate uh, the, the fact that I, as the big one, appear as the little one. Uh, and that... Uh, uh, this is one's vehicle in the world, and this means that I, my sense of separation from you means that I am talking to you now as a, as a another, mm -hmm. 
And yet I'm aware that you and I and our voices and our faces on the screen are within this one space, right? And so we have here what you call the absolute and the relative together. And they're not exclusive. It's just the most wonderful thing, I think, to discover that you continue being a person and you're the big one. And uh, uh, this is very real. I, I'm aware. I can see Richard's face on the screen now. I can see Vajralila's face. I hear both our voices. I fully believe, you know, uh, it's, it's two things at once. You're a picture in consciousness. There's no one there. There's no one here. Everything is within me. Yet I have a deep feeling of the reality of you over there in Hove or Brighton or somewhere and me here in London, Steve. And I accept both. And I, uh, I love having both. That's it. So the story of Brighton and London, that's not actually anything more than a story right now, is it? Oh, well, you see, I, I think it is, uh, in a sense, because uh, a story, to me, make, makes it sound as though it's not real. It's just a story. Whereas I would say it's the only story in town. And uh, that, uh, you see, although I understand that you're just a picture in consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. With every fiber of my being, I act as if you're real. Mm -hmm. And I act as if Richard is real. Uh, but the thing is, Richard is not here for me. This open space full of, for everything is here. And yet, I, ha I, growing up, you see, everyone is conditioned from the moment you're born to believe in your, that you're a separate person, right? Yeah. And so this is so deep. It's, it's deeper than our personal conditioning. It it's, goes back generations and generations. You know? And I think the thing is, is that the one, in its wisdom, decided to become many. And uh, two, two of those many are Richard and Vajralila at the moment. So I, <laughs> I, I guess We've had this conversation before, Vajralila. <laughs> point, I guess, for me. And sometimes it... it, it well, what is the sticking point? Maybe it's... I don't know. It, maybe it's the this is it. This is it. And I think I have experiences of... Um, it, it's almost like going into emptiness and coming back again and when I come this is completely metaphorical and when I come back again it's like I can play the game better because I don't believe in the, in the importance of the way I used to see it was there was this this, there was a face here, there was a body, and there was a whole important centre of the universe self. And when I look and can't find that, it's very freeing. It opens it all up. And when I come back, it, it's a lot lighter, and it's almost yeah. like I can play with it. Yeah. And so I get to that place, but then I come... It's almost like there's three places. Like trees are trees and mountains are mountains. Then they're not, and then they are again. Yeah. yeah so I can get to the third position... But then it seems like the third position, but I've slipped back to the first one, believing it's all real again. Yeah. And it's just a memory of getting there. And, yeah, that's the new, this is it. Yeah. It can't be kind of contained, can it? And this insight can't just be grasped and, and kept. It, it doesn't work that way. No, that's right. Well, I think you see that uh, this is the way life is given. And it has this rhythm of remembering and forgetting. And that's, you see, if you didn't forget, you wouldn't have the joy of remembering. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't go away from home, you wouldn't have the joy of coming back mm -hmm. home. See, but if you always stayed away from home, you know, that's no good. But always staying at home is no good. Mm. So I think uh, nothing's gone wrong. No, it's, it's interesting. And so what, what do you think of, I've been talking to people lately um, about how the goal is to get rid of craving and aversion and then even more. 
but that's the next thing to do. Oh, I don't go along with that. No. I don't I, think you can. I, I mean, I, it depends what you mean by craving and uh, aversion and so, you know, but you see, the thing is that, uh, well, for me, the, the goal is to see who I am and then see what happens with, with things like that. And it does affect that. But uh, the main thing is to find out who I really am. And I discover that centrally I am not Richard. Mm. Peripherally I'm Richard, but centrally I'm not. Now that's the game changer. That's the game changer. Mm. That will affect your relationship with what you want in life mm. when you find out who the you is that wants it. Yes, yes. And so so it might naturally happen, but to have it as a goal is still a... Well, everyone to their own, you know. I, I'm for, I wouldn't prescribe this, but mm. I'm just saying that, you see, when you discover who you are, and I think I would say that I come to the position where I say, well, uh, what happens is what I really want. I'm getting exactly what I want now. This moment is coming out of the nothing. So it's coming out without any plan or effort, all right, so it just arises. But I'm free to also say, well, it's exactly what I want, you see. <laughs> so I, I, am, I am receiving what I need, what I want. Uh, but part of that is I'd quite like to do this or that. Well, I, you're absolutely right. When you're seeing who you are, it, it, it kind of frees you mm. at a certain level. Mm. But uh, the, the real freedom is this, ba this basic reality of who you really are. And then the rest flows from that, I would say. Mm. Otherwise, uh, for me personally, uh, I would fail like mad. Mm. I can't, you know, I mean, you kind of not one desire on the head and think you've done it. And yeah. You've got two more come up behind you, <laughs> I find, you know. But my, dis you see, the thing is, my desires and my aversions are kind of there in the world. They're not in a box separate from the world by a meter or two, and I've got to work on them. Uh, they're actually, from looking out from this space, there's no dividing line, and the thoughts and feelings and wishes and desires and fears are part of the world. Mm. And uh, it, therefore, I kind of return my mind to the world. Mm. It's not a thing in a box separate. That's Wake up to who you really are. It's radical, mm. radical. Mm. It's seeing that your mind is a kind of blends, and your body, your sensations blend with the environment. Because there's nothing here to keep them in, you see. And so this, this is a game changer because now, you know, where are your thoughts and feelings and aversions and your headaches and your fears? And Well, they're part of the, you know, the story. Yeah. And you're free of them here, absolutely free, and, but receiving this rich world. Well, I mean, when you let the, uh, your thoughts and feelings and desires and fears out of, the box, you see, well, they change. Mm. They're not, it, it, the problem, the real problem, I would say, with the thoughts and feelings and fears is keeping them in an imaginary box, separate, you know. Uh, it's tiny. They, they're, you know, bursting to, they want to be free. <laughs> That's nice. I've got two things to ask you. One is about I am everyone, but let's come back to that in a second. Um, which is something about um, emotions and, and authenticity. And this, when I, I read and see other people that have woken up, um, at the moment, the ones that are kind of exciting and making me feel more alive are people that are radically authentic um, and even, you know, angry or... Um, I don't know, there's something about the juiciness of life that excites me. And when I hear people talk about, um, I don't know, just maybe being more ethical or having a path to get from A to B, that doesn't excite me. It doesn't make me feel so alive. Um, I, I struggle to find many people that talk from the juiciness and, and express that 
kind of freedom that might conventionally not look like an awakened person? I'm not quite sure what I'm asking you, but... Um, well, I am... Uh, uh, we have regular video hangouts. I mean, I've been around this headless thing for 40 odd years. So I've got a lot of friends I share this with, and I'm making new friends every week. And we have four or five video hangouts with 10, 15 people uh, in each, you know, of, often enough. And the, for me, the thing is, it never crosses my mind, really, has someone got this or not? Hmm. I mean, because you can't see your face. I mean, now, with you, it, I, it, I, it's, it just, it's not an issue for me at all. Are you seeing who you are? Do you know who you are? I mean... A, you can only see it for yourself, mm. right? Mm. And B, it's so obvious and not to do with any kind of realisation in terms of a thought or a feeling. You know, I mean, you can't not get it. Whether you value it is another thing. Mm. You know? But it doesn't really matter with, to me whether someone, you know, well, it does matter if they value it. But it's, it's at the bottom line is I'm seeing that there's this one consciousness in which we are happening, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, the, the issue is not whether or not someone's got it. It's, you know, uh, do we want to hang out and share our responses to this experience? Mm. Yeah? And your response is clearly different from mine, which is the point. Uh, and uh, mm. so, uh, you know, I think that... that Hmm. For me, the mark of seeing who you are is the whole question of whether or not someone's got it or not kind of, you know, at a very deep level, disappears. Because there's only one, isn't there? I mean, self-evident, there's only one consciousness. With two voices in it. So, the, yeah, okay, that's just that's the comparing, isn't it? That's, that's interesting. So as I'm interviewing people, I've only spoke to about, I don't know, I think you're my fifth person, but... Now I'm talking to you, I can recognize there's something comparing going on, like your experience and my experience, and what does what your experience mean about my experience? Which, yes, I think this is wholly valid, you see, because your experience is different from mine. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, and it'd be really boring if everyone's experience is the same. I mean, you could, it's a silly thought, really, but but the thing is that uh, your aware of being the space in which this is happening right that's the thing isn't it right now that's where we're the same you see i mean even being the same is an inadequate way of putting it mm. but because we've got the experience we don't have to worry too much about whether we say it in the same way no no i mean hopefully we don't say it in the same way mm. you know i say everything is happening within the one space and you might say oh the way i think of it and, oh that's interesting another expression with because whatever you say about it whatever i say about it doesn't hurt the space at all does it no <laughs> you can't break it you, you know mm, that's good yes it's like a one big playing going on in the space yes your experience it's all and so what's happening i guess the way things are is that there's a kind of expansion and a contraction that seems to be the way it works, doesn't it? Sometimes I feel really expansive and sometimes I feel really contracted. Yes, but the space doesn't contract or expand, does it? Hmm. I mean, how can the nothing that you're experiencing now get any bigger? It's always vast and endless. Yes. Yes. Yes, so within that, there seems to be a rhythm of contraction and, and, and expansion. But once you see which is not a feeling that comes and goes or expands and drags, it's just this observation. You see, you think, oh, I distinguish between what expands and contracts and what doesn't. Mm. But I've got both. I don't have to kind of no. uh, control the expanding and contracting no. or stop it or something, because that's life. And even if trying to control happens, that's part of it too. That's, yeah, really. I mean, you know, you're going to try and control it. You, you won't not. You're, that's the way we're built, you know. So you have compassion for yourself mm. uh, exactly as you are. Uh, uh, because being a human being, you know, appearing, the one that you are appearing as Vajralila and, and me appearing as Richard or me being space for others, you know, human beings are complicated, unknowable, 
d vast you know you you never fully understand how you, you work well that's because you're obviously in one sense based on you know it's coming from the real mystery mm. of being now uh, uh, yes so to to ex you know to recognize that that you you'll never knock it into shape and so what's your experience of, you seem to be really comfortable, of course there isn't really a relative and an absolute, that's just language, but you seem very comfortable kind of um, just talking about yeah. going from one to the other quite easily. Well, I, I haven't always been and I probably won't always be. Okay. Uh, but I, I think it's because uh, some years ago uh, I had to really sort it out for myself. I think that's it. You you hear all the words, but in the end, you have to sort these things out, live them, mm. them to be real you know, for you. And what I lived through uh, ten years ago or more ago, I just went through a phase where uh, my I became aware of the sort of inadequacy of Richard and uh, that he wasn't getting sorted out and that he felt afraid and self-conscious and couldn't really, you know, when you feel afraid of, of people or the world, you can't solve that fear by just thinking it through. Mm. It's a deep thing, you see. And I had to come to recognize the, you know, the, the simple fact that I could not uh, sort that out. Mm. You know, I, I had to do something. But part of doing it was recognizing that my feeling of separateness was here to stay. Mm. And I couldn't just wish it away or think it away or meditate it away. Uh, maybe some people can, I couldn't. And, but, you see, uh, then I, when I looked more deeply into this, I came to the view that this feeling of separateness and lack of control and uh, not knowing everything and all this kind of stuff, was actually what I really wanted. It was a deep blessing of the one appearing as a separate being. And it wasn't a mistake, and it wasn't I was doing anything wrong. This was the whole point, was the one, because I could see uh, the obvious, that even while I was feeling separate, I was the one. So I wasn't doing anything wrong. I, I you know, uh, And then, you see, I think that when I thought that through and realized what a deep blessing it was to, to uh, somehow the one has done this trick of becoming many. Mm. And, I, and Richard is one of the many. Genuinely so, you see. It's not, you see, if, when people say, oh, it's just a story, it's just an idea. Some idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you'd fight tooth and nail. At, you know, it, to defend yourself, wouldn't you, in certain circumstances? I mean, it's just instinctual. It's deeper than a, just a concept. It's a very deep identification with this being separate. And so uh, when I realized, or over a period of time, came to understand it in my own way, that this was uh, not a mistake, but a, a deeply precious thing where the one gets to kind of separate out into many and meet itself in disguise. You know, I mean, wonderful thing. Then what happens is that what seemed like a problem, uh, you recognize is a blessing. And so, you know, you shift, you have, must shift from this resistance and feeling of failure to this feeling of acceptance mm. and welcoming. And then you shift uh, to... Realizing, I mean, theoretically, the one, I suppose, could have remained one and not become many, mm. right? And how boring would that be? And, uh, you know, nothing would happen. There'd be no one else, <laughs> you know, forever, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's the peace without any opposition. There's the peace without any problems. And, well, it's, I would say, you see, that at, at a deep level, you decided you didn't want that you know, to put it in those kind of metaphorical ways. And here we are, a real feeling of Richard and Vajra yet the direct observation that there's only one consciousness. Mm. 
And so you shift now from this being a problem, I'm feeling separate from Raju Leela. Oh, you know, I'm feeling a bit nervous about, you know, oh, I'm not doing it right to, uh uh-uh, that's the, that's the, that's the deal. <laughs> this is what life is, you see. You see, and it doesn't affect who I really am. I've got both, you see. Now, that shifts you from this feeling, oh, no, 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 I'm getting anxious, you know, to, oh, well, you know, a deep, yes, I think, you know, uh, careful what you wish for, but life is made of problems, and life is made of separateness. Uh, uh, and that's what, that is a beautiful, deep, challenging, difficult, tragic, beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah. And that has to be an experience and not just a reflection. Oh, yeah, it's not just a, oh, I'll tell myself that story that I well, am. Well, yes, you see, the, what is always true is that the nothing that is full of something is always available, right? I mean, that, uh, you, you need to live, but you can live fully 100% now. That basic position, you know, the most important thing is, that, is seeing that who you really are. Now, what unfolds in that, the journey, that is different for each of us but has common themes, mm. is this uh, journey which involves growing mm. and developing and two steps forward and one step back. And that, uh, yes, you, you learn through experience. Mm. And that, that's it. You, you can't have that bit all at once. Mm. But you have the basic bit, which is the master key and the, mm. you know, the, 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 the thing that makes everything else possible. You have that. 100% now. You can't see your face. Your hands just been into nothing. Everything's happening in this space. And it's a kind of saying, yes, that is true. Yes. Even though I feel, I, you know, I've got a lot of growing to do. Good. <laughs> and that's another, that's one thing I was going to ask you. In your workshops, I've noticed the last few times I've been on one, is that you get people to say out loud, yes, I see. There's yes. no face. You get people to actually say it out loud. Yes. I, I get the feeling that that's important. Yes, it is. Loud, not just to kind of have a look and think, oh, I mean, I've been there. But to say yes. out loud. Is that, that's right. What, is that about dispelling doubt? What is, what, what's the reason? That, that is, uh, it's not really about dispelling doubt. It's about the fact that when you communicate your experience, into a social situation, the person that learns the most is you. Uh, you, you uh, something is true, uh, whether you tell someone else or not, but when you tell someone else, it becomes more real in a way because the society knows about it and reflects it back in a different way. Now, if you had theoretically chosen not to be, become many and just remain the one, you wouldn't not only have to say anything, there wouldn't be anyone to say it to. You couldn't grow, right? Because, I mean, nothing doesn't grow. I mean, being doesn't grow. But now that you have this social situation, all kinds of things open up. And you can grow or you might not grow. And part of the the whole thing about the one becoming many is the one that has someone else to talk to. (laughs) Right? It's not just one, it's now it's kind of two, yet one at the same time. So you, you have someone else to talk to about being many and one. And the very process, you see, I, I would say that one reason for becoming many is because you're really curious about who you are, right? I mean, you've happened. And, and you want to think about it, right? I mean, you just want to reflect on this amazing fact that you are. Now, if you're alone and there's no one else, no, you, there's not much reflection going to go on because, I mean, right? Because there's nothing. Mm. So you, it, now that you, this world of separateness and otherness has emerged, you see, now you've got someone to say to, look, isn't it amazing that, that you, you are, that you are the one and I'm the one, you know, and we seem to be two yet one. You know, and uh, isn't it's it? I, I just need to talk to someone about it <laughs> as the one. You know, now that process it, is you kind of as the one reflecting on the fact that you are the one, and uh, discover you know coming up with new things with with others. But yes, to to is it, it's it's just a gen. It's true of anything that if you. Uh, 
if you uh, speak in public about it, uh, you know, it, it, it becomes more real and it has an effect and it comes back to you. Mm. And uh, it, it, you, you grow through it. Yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, uh, if you, if you in public stand up for something and, and voice it, it's a powerful thing, isn't it? It is. And I, yes, I, I get what you're saying. And I, I, I've, I've been doing, I have, I'm not doing it at the moment, but I, will, I have been doing a bit of guiding on LU. And part of what happens is that people say for themselves whether they see or not. They, you know, I don't say, yes, you've seen, I pronounce you, you know, enlightened or anything. Um, and what, one thing I've noticed is that um, quite often the Buddhists that come through um, often don't quite believe their experience and it's doubt that seems to be no, no, I couldn't, um, I couldn't possibly say that I, oh, yeah. I've seen something. Actually, on on that, I I was looking at some of Doug, Douglas Hardin's um, stuff earlier, and he's talked, he speaks about why it's so hard to see, and one of it is it's set up to be difficult, and so if it's easy, it doesn't count, and we have we're identified as seekers. And finding is too threatening. There are a couple mm -hmm. of the things he says, and I kind of, I like that. It's uh, yeah. It is. I mean, I think for myself, being a you know a hardcore Buddhist for all these years, and then looking, it's just like I can't see my own face. Why did I have to read all these books and go on all these retreats? It's 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 so simple. Yes, <laughs> I think that's it. I mean, whenever you come to it, you're where you're at, and you've done what you've you've done and it's led you to the moment of seeing so you know that that one respects the path that everyone has come to but i mean in terms of the future uh, we're in a position where we can make it easier for people we can make it more available you know if you don't know about how simple it is then uh, uh you should do you know i mean it should be common uh, knowledge that there is this open gate so simple into who you really are the other thing is if you uh you know, like what you're doing now, uh, it, it makes it more uh, kind of obvious to people when they hear people sharing it like this, how easy it is to share, how natural it is, you see, how it isn't, I've got it a bit more than you, or you've got it a bit more, it's not, you can't get more of the nothing that's full of something, but you've got your, it validates your unique response to it, so there isn't a standard response that you somehow got to kind of uh, arrive at, you know, is you see what you do and it's going to be different from anyone else. But that's why the video hangouts and workshops uh, are so valuable, because people, uh, we do need encouragement, uh, uh, you know, yes, you have got it. Richard, yes, you have got it, Marjorie Lillard. And when when people, uh, when you invite people to speak in a group, you see, then it underlines the fact that everyone's got it and that we're all equal at that level. That there isn't one teacher telling everybody what it's all about. Mm. It's uh, a circle, not a hierarchy. And uh, so the more that people speak, uh, about being the one, and you know, their experience of this non-verbal experience, the more everyone realizes, oh, well, he can do it, I can do it. You know, I mean, the, yes, I see what you mean. This this is not a hierarchy. This is a circle. We are all equal here. You know, we're different mm. in the one space. Mm. So it, it, meeting together with others is powerful, and, and that's one of the reasons why. The other, another, of course, it is highly infectious, and it's more than infectious because infection is one thing affecting another, and this is mm. one, two things within the one. Lovely. But I mean, how wonderful is that? And that's something I really like about the headless thing is that there's no um, there's no hierarchy, and it's not spiritual. It's not called any ology. It's and I know, do you think anything would be lost if suddenly there was a big headless church built and a committee of trustees? And do you, do you, what do you think? Well, we've got a committee of trustees. We've got, you know, <laughs> for the Jolin Trust. But uh, because uh, uh, it, there in the world, uh, you need to organise things. Uh, but but uh, we are... Uh, 
you know, as clear as it can be, that uh, about what we're sharing here, which is this non hierarchical non-verbal, direct uh, way in. Douglas, in well, I was watching one of his videos recently because I put subtitles in the Melbourne talk. It's a brilliant talk, and he's he's talking about you know looking in the mirror and there's your face you see, and then you come up your arm to the, make a little journey of a few couple of feet up to this line where you disappear into the great void, you see. And that is, uh, you know, a journey from your appearance there in the mirror, you see, to your reality at the near end of your arm. And he said, so, uh, you know, he said, there are spiritual paths, long paths, short paths, hard paths, easy paths, you see. You see, and here's the one meter path. <laughs> right? He said, maybe I should call it the ignoble path. <laughs> <laughs> he was being provocative, you know. But I mean, it is. It's so, uh, it's not kind of. Someone else was saying in a video hangout, I said, yeah, God, I was in the spiritual group a while back. And, you know, if you cracked a joke, someone would think you weren't serious. And this way, it, it, it is, you know, you kind of let out of school. Mm, nice. You know, and you can joke as much as you like about it, and it doesn't hurt the boy. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, the thing is that it is freedom, isn't it? And it is not prescribing rules, it is not about any guru, uh, I'm very glad to say. <laughs> <laughs> and what you do with the seeing is you go around people telling people that they have got it, not that they haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and does that, you know, there's someone in a video hangout recently and uh, saying, yes, but I'm confused. Join the club. <laughs> you know, I mean, Richard is sometimes confused about, I mean, that is what life is about. If it was absolutely clear 24-7. Yeah. I mean, where's the fun in that? Yeah. This is clear 24-7. But that is the mystery unfolding entirely. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah. And so going back to something earlier, I wonder about seeing... So, yes, you're right. Right now, there is space and your me as it were <laughs> you're feeling it oh, yes <laughs> um, <laughs> i don't know could you talk about that sort of is that your experience that you are everything that you're everyone so i don't know something about if i'm having a difficulty with another person and i can see actually i am everything i am this other person that is what's happening right now is, do you experience other people like that? Like you are them? They are part of you? Well, yes, yes. But what I would say is that the experience is non-verbal and cannot be defined. And so when you put it into words like you have done, I fully understand what you mean, but I might put it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, I certainly don't, you know, all day long go around thinking I'm everybody. <laughs> right? No, neither do I. Because it's a non-verbal experience, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. or, or feeling love for the world or something. No. This is a neutral, absolutely neutral. And that frees you uh, to uh, not have to think of it in one way. Mm. And to find new ways. Of, you know, Listen to the, the, the void speaks in new ways every day. Mm -hmm. And and so this means also that you can accept and understand and deeply uh, kind of listen to others. So someone says, yes, I feel like I really am that other person. And you know that explicitly. Yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. And someone else says, I don't feel like I am that person. And you go, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I don't, you know, and it doesn't. It doesn't fit into one expression. And so this uh, kind of uh, distinguishes between the experience, which is nonverbal and can't be defined and expressed, and the expression, which is changing and different for everyone. Okay. And so sometimes part of the play is a very strong separateness feeling. That's part of the game at that moment. You see? Yes, you see. Yes. What's wrong with that? Mm. 
nothing. There's such a strong pull, is it, I find, to kind of know it. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's how it is. We've got it sorted now. Yes. There's a, another friend on the video hangouts. I mean, they're so inspiring, meeting people. And uh, he's probably mid-30s, late-30s. And he's been searching and doing things for years like people have, you know, and going to groups and and uh, came across a headless way and, and in his own respectful way, you know, a bit cautious, I suppose, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it it's there and you can't deny it. And uh, he said, uh, probably a few weeks back, I mean, this has been with him for, for a bit, he said, you know, I used to try and understand it. Yeah. Right, what you say? I, 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 I just thought enlightenment had to be about some kind of final understanding, and now I've got the experience. I oh, I really if I don't have to understand it. Mm. Oh, mm. yes. The uh, old friend, uh, you know, in back in the sixties, just before she met Douglas, she she was um, interested in other religions and enlightenment, and she I did an interview with her and on the YouTube channel. And she said, I somehow thought that the answer must be an idea. Mm. A thought, you know, an understanding. What a relief to finally accept it isn't. You're kind of an idiot, you know, you don't know. But whoa, you see, you know. And then that embracing of this kind of, uh, the fact that you'll never figure it out and you'll never pin it down means you're open to new ideas. It actually paradox, par paradox, because you're now open, not to ch a channeling into a one understanding, but you're open to as many expressions as are presented. Really. Yes. Yes, and I think there's something about that kind of, when I was talking about authenticity, that kind of breaking open of the absolute mystery and not knowing of it all. For example, when someone dies, it, it's you can't work it out okay the space is doing this and that's the game right now it doesn't really work does it no <laughs> no calling it a game is is i understand but it, it's more than a game as well you can't just uh, kind of uh you know boil it down to that mm. I, before i came across seeing at school i i was a christian and you know, for all the right reasons and probably some wrong reasons. And there was someone else who was still a friend, going back years, who I I, I, was th I imagined if I asked him about he'd say, well, I don't really know. Right? I don't really know. And on the one hand, I kind of felt, well, I know. Right? <laughs> on the other hand, I thought, I was jealous. I thought, you know, what freedom to kind of not be in a box, to not know, you know? Mm -hmm. well, that's where I'm at, you know, that's what I value now. Is yes, not knowing. Not, yes, because who you really are is unknowable. Mm. And that it's seeable, visible, but unknowable. Yes, it's full of paradox, isn't it? The first yeah. thing, it's like more and more paradox. You know, like I'm doing these interviews and it's just taking me further into not knowing, which is making me want to go further in. It's funny, isn't Wonderful. it? Wonderful, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You all right for another five minutes? Oh, for as long as you like. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Um, the thing is that uh, the, the void, who you really are, has not been here before. Mm. and uh, life is unfolding in a new way. Mm. Now, there are, are themes that go back, you know, centuries, you know, in the way things work and unfold. But, you know, the void has never been here with Zoom and Skype and Google Hangout and Internet, and, you know, this is arising within the space. It's talking to itself now mm. uh, and can see itself, but you're here and I'm there. Lovely. Now, that, that, this is uh, significant, significant and new, and, uh, you know, and, but, but the void, God doesn't know, I would say, it doesn't really know where it's going. No. So, you know, that is what you really want. You want an adventure. 
And this is it, really, now. That's why the This Is It title is, is yes. kind of good, because yes. this is it, and we don't know what's happening next. And that's maybe with when you talk about, um, it could be seem to be like a god or something you're talking about, when you talk about the one, I don't think you really mean a god, do you? But Well, again, it's a non-verbal experience, so that frees you to use whatever word you like, because no word will make it into a thing. So you can't, you actually can't reify it or solidify it. Mm. So, I mean, if you don't like the word God, choose Fred. But <laughs> <laughs> so there's no being that's kind of got this plan and this is the game and I'm going to make you do, you know, it's not like that. This well, with no you see, uh, now you've got that image. Well, let's, let, you know, that image might have some value in it. It's, you know, that idea. I mean, it's like you, you're not having to dismiss it because it's not true, you, you, because you know what is the truth that is indefin undefinable, and then these are expressions. And so you think, you know, with that idea that God knows and it's a plan is working out, or, you know, she is working out, that's all rubbish. I said, well, hang on a minute, there might be something in it. Mm. So from over there, well, is there something in it for you at the moment? Well, you see, I think that, uh, yes, there is. It, uh, uh, there is. The idea that there's a plan and it's unfolding, you see, uh, is one end of the spectrum, and the other one is things are arising spontaneously out of the nothing. Mm. Now, you say, oh, well, it's obviously one's true and the other's not. Oh, hang on a minute. Mm. Neither is true, or both, you know, or I've got room to be nourished by either. Both, you see. So uh, let's see now the plan thing. Okay, well, I understand, you know, I can't find a plan anywhere, but it, it, it's as if there is one. Mm. It's very odd, you know. I mean, it seems to be working very well. Mm. <laughs> right? You know, I mean, you know, this is, oh, I just got my order. This is um, the model here. Uh, now, that is a map of you, right? You've seen this model. Yeah. And the centre and the layers. Well, that's a pretty amazing structure, isn't it? Now, call it just spontaneously arising or, you know, evolved over billions of years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit like, how, how did that happen? I'm just moving my things when I spilt my water. Well, I'm just uh, uh, saying that you don't have to get fixed. Yeah, I hear you. You know, on, on any, you know, you can have, uh, be open to something that you perhaps were dismissing because the idea didn't fit in with your current mm. theology. <laughs> That's pretty radical. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do you think about things like synchronicities? Um, it seems related to what you're talking about. Sometimes I notice kind of like, whoa, lots of <laughs> synchronicities. I know. I mean, uh, uh, you know, miracles happen every day, don't they? Uh -huh. and, the, and that, I think, is based on the basic miracle of being. You know, uh, uh, the fact that you are is an incredible stroke of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't deserve it. You didn't plan it. You didn't. Know, you don't know how you did it. I'm talking about who you really are. You know. Uh, you know. Now, is that synchronicity? Is that pure luck? Is that magic? Is it a miracle? All of those things somehow. You know. And so, you know, the fact that uh, things happen like you know, synchronicity it kind of flows. I would say from you know what is not possible, having achieved being <laughs> or achieving it right now. <laughs> you know so I think you know it, it, you enjoy all those things I do you know yeah. and I'm astonished and yet you know underlying it is this even you know is is this astonishment that one is you know and uh, what a miracle and I, I think you know awakening who you really are put it in grandiose terms is a 
recognition of this basic miracle and you know gift of, you know that never runs dry and mm. just you know it's just uh, you know a, a brilliant deeply deeply friendly deeply deeply kind of terrifying <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. And I'm sure you've met a lot of people over the years that, that have seen. Ha, have you seen lots of dark? I know Douglas Hyden talks about dark nights. Have you experienced dark nights and have you heard people talk about that? And what, what do you think's happening when? Well, I, I think what I was talking about before about recognizing the reality of feeling separate uh -huh. uh, uh, was a kind of dark night, I suppose, for me. You know, I have dark nights most days. <laughs> you know, I, life life is challenging. I don't have serious dark nights every day, you know, but uh, you know, life does not go according to Richard's plan. No. <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, it's remarkable if you start paying attention how little it goes to according to plan. I have to spill some water. I mean, you know. Uh, the people just came and collected the cat. We were cat sick, sitting, and they've just and they've gone before this meeting. Now I've realised they've left a kind of important box for the cat, you know. And I ran out the door, and they're gone. Uh. I mean, but that is life. If you know, ever, we complain. Oh, you know that. You know, if if we got what we wanted all the time, we'd complain about that. Mm. Life, the the deal with life. Is that it is has got dark nights, mm. with mini ones and maxi ones, mm. uh, and it's not what you want. It's what you know. It, it uh, this is the adventure and the thrill and the and the danger, you know. And, uh, it, and it's it's deeply uh, kind of uh, good and deeply uh, dangerous. Not who you are, who you are is safe, but life is dangerous. Mm. And it's uh, silly to deny it. Mm. You know, it's dangerous. You're mortal. You, you don't know, uh, you know, when you get in the car, you know, nothing to do with you, some idiot drives into you. <laughs> <laughs> some well-meaning soul, I mean. <laughs> So, but I think this is where, you see, uh, if you've got the idea that finding out who you are is going to make life uh, uneventful, <laughs> I mean, hey, anyone in their right mind wouldn't want it to be uneventful, you know, mm -hmm. eternal peace with nothing happening. I mean, <laughs> might as well be dead. <laughs> but, you know, at, at some point, when you're seeing who you are, uh, and if you've had that idea, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that you were wrong. Mm. You know, that life does not fit into that neat little box. When you wake up to who you are, you've no more problems. Problem, it does fit into a neat little box in the sense that you locate the problems there and there are no problems here. Mm. That's the equation that solves all problems. But it solves them by placing them and not getting rid of them. Mm. Now you live your life from this unchanging being that where nothing ever happens and there's no one else. See, and there's nowhere to go. You live into this world where a lot is happening. Mm. And here, everything goes according to plan because there's nothing that happens. And everything is in control. There's nothing outside you, you know. But there, it's, it's not in your control. And uh, accidents happen and change. It's change. You see, mm. and, that, and now you've got both. You live from your eternal home into your temporary home, mm. and uh, this is the best of both worlds. Um, and you see, then I think that when when you kind of um, you know work that one out, because life does not let you off the hook, mm. uh, one way or another, it won't let you off the hook. You have to come to terms with the fact that this is the nature of the beast within the space mm. and uh, there's a certain amount of kind of eating humble pie <laughs> you know uh, but then you see uh, and suffering and pain mm. but then when you kind of keep going 
seeing, don't give up on the seeing. Mm. You see, what I think happens is that what we experience as difficulties and problems hide within them a much deeper gift, mm. a, a realization, a truth, a, a discovery that we could not get to uh, in any other way than through this journey, mm. which involves difficulty uh, and uh, kind of uh, this rhythm of resistance and surrender. So, so it does go according to plan. <laughs> so, as it were, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, there's quite a lot in here, isn't there? I think I'm going to watch it back and 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 yeah, just draw some of these things out. I think for me, one of the big things I've got from this conversation is separation and and comparing and. Um, remembering that that's all part of the um, play of the one, as you would call it. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, one, perhaps one way of putting it simply is uh, when you find out who you really are, which you could call the big one, you know, the, the, the next question is, what do you do with the little one? Because mm. <laughs> it doesn't go away. And you, you see where it is, you see. And, and that's where I think, uh, uh, because I think this question for you, which we've talked about before, mm. is such a deep uh, and important issue. Mm. What do you do with the little one? Because it doesn't go away. Do you just pretend it's not real? Well, it doesn't work. No. No. So this is where uh, the reality of the little one and of the world announces itself. You say, oh, it's just a game. It's just a story. Mm. It doesn't let you get away with that. Mm. It is not. It's a wild beast, you see, mm -hmm. the line. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, hidden within this is, uh, is something... Uh, true and powerful and real uh, uh, and deep and the and so I think t the question there that is so central and so important and uh, uh, not to be lightly brushed off. You have to live it and come come to be both the big one and the little one. Mm. Yeah, and then you let others. You see, be both the big one and the little one. Yes. And now, how wonderful is that? If, if you see, I uh, uh, one last thought, perhaps. But if you, uh, if something happens to you, good or bad, uh, I heard a program on the radio this morning, and it was. Uh, a uh, Radio 4 program where they invite people who have been through an experience years and years ago together to, it's called the reunion, and they uh, talk about what happened. And this was the 1979, there was a, a, a yachting race, a fast net race, round down Cornwall Way. It's a, one of the most difficult yachting races in the world, I think. Anyway, there were forecasts of force eight gales. Well, it turned, they all set off and it turned into force 10, 11. Oh. And 15 people drowned. And anyway, these, uh, the, the waves, you know, they said if you were at the bottom of Dover, of the cliffs of, uh, Dover, is it? You know, the cliffs there and you're looking up, you know how high it lo would look. That's what the waves look like. Right. And uh, it, it was just dreadful. But all these people came together. And you could see that the very fact of them talking about it together brought it all back, made it real, but it was really important that they did. See. Mm. And um, when you uh, see who you really are, it's, what, it, this is an amazing experience to realize that you are. Mm. I mean, there's nothing like it because everything is within it. The fact that you are is just the experience. See, which normally we overlook. Now, wouldn't you, 
if, uh, uh, you know, if you could want to meet someone else who has that experience. Mm -hmm. Now, paradoxically, you say, well, there is no one else. The experience is there's no one else. But I'd love to meet someone else who knows that. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Well, that's what's happening now, right? Yes. You know what it's like to be, right? Of course you do. You are. Right? It's the thing you know most, most intimately. Mm. You see, but now you're getting to meet someone else. You see, it's the reunion. Mm. You know, gosh, you know, I mean, it, everything's within you, isn't it? Yes, I know. You see, mm. and sometimes it's scary, isn't it? Yes, you see, mm. waves. <laughs> It's funny because for, for me, quite often the strongest experiences of that are when I'm counselling clients and I have a dot in my therapy room that we had in an exercise that I took off and I've stuck in a place in my therapy room where I see it really oh, yeah. so that I'm reminded there's nothing there pretty yeah. frequently. And so I'm with a client and, in, and, and space is kind of doing the job. Yes. And it's, it, it's really rich. It, it's, it's the richest, if you yeah. like, times when that kind of whole paradox is playing itself out. And, yeah. It's, it, it's, now, doesn't it make a difference that you can talk to me and you know I understand what you're talking about, more yeah. or less, right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You're living, you're, without knowing, you you know, in, in terms of, you know, ideas, you're living, you're with your client, you're being them, you're being space for them, you're operating from this great mystery, it's doing all that, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yes, exactly, that is the way, I don't know how it does it, but, right? Mm. I mean, that, you, you're meeting, you're meeting others, you see, in a kind of reunion of, yeah. Amazing the way it works, right? Amazing. It, and it, I think I, I don't know what to do, you know, and I surrender to the one, you know, and it comes up with what I need, right? It, or not. <laughs> I mean, but in terms of clients, sometimes clients yes. don't, get, don't get this. Obviously, and I don't. No, know. I'm not saying about talking about seeing. I'm just saying that when you're with, you know, when you're with a client, you might not be talking about headlessness, or you know, you're talking about their mother or something. Oh. But you're operating from the the great void, as it were, mm. right? Mm. And you, you, you. Sometimes, for example, a client comes in, and, I, and after about a quarter of an hour, I'm thinking, what on earth can I do? You know, how on earth? I mean, what what can I do to help this person? And then I hear myself say that, and thought, all right, just wait, just be open. Mm. Something comes up, right? Yes. Now you understand what I'm talking about, right? Yes, yes. There you go. How it, yeah, the space doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an easy ride, isn't it? Really being a therapist and kind of letting the space do the work and still getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's one end of the spectrum. <laughs> okay. That's... Great. Well, lovely to chat with you. Oh, yes. Really wonderful. Yeah, there's a lot there. Stretch me. Um, and I'm going to be seeing you in a few weeks. Yes. Yes. A full house as usual, which is great. Do you think we need to do two days or one enough? At the moment, we've got three on the waiting list, so not yet, but if no. more, I've told them if more book, then I'm, I'll ask you to do another book. I can send out another email to everyone and let them know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for giving your time, as it were. Thank you for giving your time. <laughs> <laughs> In the timeless. <laughs> And I'll see you very soon. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.